another bike. This is the 1986 Yamaha Venture 1300 XVZ 1300. I think it's got 30. I think it's got 30,000 kilometers on it, something like that. Yeah, 30,200 kilometers, and the bike's just absolutely mint. The only thing the guy did is he changed this radio and put in a modern radio system into it. But uh, everything else is stock. Like you see all the, you know, the side covers are all still nice and shiny and chrome. Um, the rims, like, you look at the rims, they're not faded. You know, all the chrome pieces are in excellent shape. You know, look at the fork tubes. The fork tubes looks like they're out of a showroom. In really, uh, really good shape. You know the handlebars. You know these things usually they get all faded. Well, <clears throat> these are almost the same as the one on the on the uh, XJ here, 900. You see how they get all faded and yellowed, and the covers usually start going like this. You know this this bike here is. This bike has the original louvers in it too. <laughs> Most bikes, this, these fall out, you never see them again. <laughs> it's a good shape, really nice shape. You, know, you look at the trunk, you know, the, the trunk's like brand new. Nope, I think this is going to be my BC bike. <laughs> Look at the plastics on it. No fading or cracking in the gauges like my other one. Oh, this bike is in this bike is in really nice shape. Look at the decals. The decal like it looks like just sort of the showroom. This thing. Okay, hasn't run in, uh, since in the 2015, six years. Right. Hasn't been on the road since 2015. He started up and fired it up a few times, like once a year. I think he said he had it going three or four months ago. I just topped it up with um, high test fuel, $1.52 a liter, which is insane. That's like six bucks a gallon. And... Uh, yeah, so the the um, clutches leak down, mine leak down too. So I'm gonna change this to dot six, and uh, I screwed up, screwed up the threads in there. I got new screws from the other bike, so I bleed that out. And the rear brake needs uh, bleeding out from sitting. So that's what I'm gonna do. First thing I'm going to do is see if this bike even runs. He said it ran. I pulled the battery out uh, at his house last week to see if I could find a match. And uh, everybody sold out, so. I got that on order of the battery. Using the battery. Oh, it's a car battery. There's keys. Now some uh, jumper here. I think the mice must be eating this thing. This thing is completely rotted out.
I got the garage door shut because it's, I think it's like 92 out there. And uh, the humidity is just killer. pump kick in. Usually I cycle the key a couple times. What the hell? Turn that off. Cycle it again. Choke. Connection here. I know my battery's charged up good. Uh, my battery, this cables, these cables are no good. I go get my good cables. We'll get my good cables. Okay, here's my good cables. Completely off now. I just hope I don't have to take the carbs off. I didn't film it, but I uh, probably should have. <laughs> but I just took this cover off, <clears throat> sucked out all the uh, the old dot three brake fluid, which was pretty brown, and there was sediment all on the bottom. Took a clean rag, cleaned that all out, and uh, the bleeder is right under this rubber cover here. So I just uh, I took this cover all off. And kept bleeding it and bleeding it and bleeding it until the purple fluid came out and uh, she pumped right up. Back brake, same thing. Get this over here. 
this is the uh, uh, the reservoir for the rear brakes and uh, runs down to here the master or the uh, calipers and I just bled it here I just kept pumping it and pumping it and pumping it and flushing out all the old brake fluid it's not too bad I've seen worse just basically brown fluid and there was a little bit of sediment that, that screw came in the one bag here. I don't know where it goes because it doesn't do nothing, but um, Yeah, so that's pumped up now And that's with the dot five brake fluid <clears throat> Dot five brake fluid is synthetic and it, it uh, It's it seals better the seals seal better and you get less foaming and bubbles when you're bleeding and pumping it. <clears throat> like if you pump the dot three too much, it just turns to foam and then you, you gotta let it settle out where the dot five doesn't foam up. And then I took the air filter out. I blew it out for now, but it's gonna need a new air filter just because it's, it's kind of falling apart. Um, yeah, so the front brakes, you can see there, it's nice and clear and purple there now too. I did the same thing with that. <clears throat> there wasn't a problem with the front brakes. The front brakes were, they're hard as a rock. They pumped right up. Um, the one thing I did notice though is the tips. These exhaust tips come off, they're on springs. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of pitting down here. Probably from just sitting in his garage with, moisture and condensation in the winter time, but you can see these two springs hold the tip on and my tip is uh, rotted out underneath. So that's kind of strange. I've never seen that before. So <clears throat> I'm going to look for a couple tips and uh, bang those two off. But the tires are, I, forget, I think he, he said he put the new tires on front and back there in 2015 and he hasn't driven it since. So uh, I think I'll change the oil and filter and um, just wait for the battery to come in. It's back ordered, it should be in this week, I hope, by the end of the week. And then I'm taking this bike out for a ride. Okay, that's it for today. I just got the new battery last night. So this is, these are the ones you poured it pour the acid in. I hope it's not popping up there. <clears throat> you pour the acid into them and uh, then you charge it up. But what I like to do, and I even confirmed that with the store owner there, is it's best to let the, that acid soak in because it's just all bubbles. It's just bubbling all the time. And you don't want to charge a battery if it's got dry spots in it. So I let, I let that acid soak in there all night and then I charge it on trickle charge for um, but it's seven hours today and I think that says I think it says on here somewhere like five I think in a little booklet minimum five hours of trickle charging so I got that to go in and I noticed in here is this is the this bleeds the rear brake uh, the rear brake has uh, a module in it where it, it uh, if I apply the rear brake it applies um, brakes to the front brake and the back brake at the same time. And then this is, it's a, I'm not sure how it balances, I can't remember. I remember when I took the course or worked on these bike in the day, but but it's a, I forgot what you call it, not a modulator valve, um, something like that. So when I'm bleeding that rear brake, I didn't bleed it here yet, and I just, a couple little cracks here, and uh, I got a little air on it, and now she's stiff as could be. So, uh, It's all down there, leaked a little bit down in there. So I'm ready to put the battery in, fire it up. I got some uh, fuel conditioner I'm gonna dump in there too because it did have some bad gas in there. Even though it still ran, it just, it's just not running crisp. I think it's just because of that old gas. This is where you get access to your battery and your fuses, fuses here, and there's a little panel back here as well too for the radio and that. Um, and there's just one hook one hook right here at the top and it fits into this rubber grommet well you know what his rubber grommet's missing 
Often the rubber, rubber guard will fall out and it'll still be around here somewhere. Shoot, I just noticed that missing. Uh, let me look for that rubber grommet. I might even have a spare rubber grommet for that. I just stuck two half ones in there for now. I thought I had a spare one because I bought one for my first bike. And then uh, when I was taking off the lower fairings, the original one fell down. That's probably what the case is. With. It's probably down inside here somewhere. But I don't see it. She goes, she's in there now. Okay. There's only one screw that holds that in here. On my other bike, I put a stud in here, six mil stud, and a wing nut. So I didn't need any tools to get at it. I'll probably do that on this one. Let me just see if there's a little dowel that goes in here. Yeah, it's in there. There we go. Okay. So we'll do that. And, uh, turn around. High beams on. Choke. These are the factory tips on the Yamaha Venture. Back here on the exhaust. And from this thing sitting on a damp smet floor, it's rotted that out. And uh, there's, there's, the chrome is still good and everything on the pipes, like it's a little bit pitted in here. But uh, and it has a little bit of pitting on these railings as well too. But I found a guy on eBay. <laughs> Selling a set of these, these are $75 each. 
selling them for a pair for $18. Brand new from Yamaha. So that's perfect timing. Probably hasn't been a pair on there the last 10 years for that. So there we go. Yep, there's the hook. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, it comes with the, uh, the rubbers and new springs. Holy. Oh, those are four bolts. Come on, it's okay. You got room for the other one? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> we were just okay. staring at him. He doesn't go after those, he doesn't like squirrels, but. Okay, I've been working on this XVZ 1300 1986 and uh, I've been going through the whole bike because I'm, I'm hoping to do a, uh, <clears throat> a nice ride on it, three or four thousand kilometers. I'm hoping Thunder Bay, past Thunder Bay and back. And uh, I think I've put on probably three or four hundred kilometers on it, just booting around in it, checking everything all out. So uh, uh, I'm getting a safety done Monday. <laughs> I do have it insured, it is in my name. Um, the brake pads at the front would have passed. They were probably at 60%. And uh, uh, the one, like the one pad would be 60%, the other pad might have been 40%. So I replaced uh, the front brake pads, EBC, all brand new ones. And there was one EBC set at the front that was like new, and I put it in the back, and then I took out the uh, the other ones, probably original ones. So how this bike works, the braking <clears throat> on this bike, the rear brake pedal works the left caliper and the rear brakes. And there's a modulating valve, proportioning valve. Uh, so it's 70% uh, front, 30% rear brake. I believe that's how that works. And the bleed screw for it is right up and down here. I didn't video it, I should have showed you. So I put the new pads and everything. I was gonna go take it for a safety. And uh, when you put the new pads and you gotta push the pistons in to make room to get them in. And the one piston stuck on this side. So I called the guy and said, hey, cancel my safety today. I'm gonna tear these brakes all apart and clean out the uh, the pistons and the, the O-rings and like I flushed it all up before, <clears throat> dot six, but uh, I should have known better. It was gummed up in there. I took them all off. There's four pistons there, four pistons there, four pistons in the back. I took them all out. It took me about four hours. Cleaned them all out with a pick. Use a right angle pick. Cleaned it br and brushed it out. Cleaned it again. Brushed it about three or four times each time. Each time you get a little bit more gum out of it. And they work beautiful now. Like These calipers aren't even hot at all. And I've been riding this bike for two hours. And, uh, but uh, a couple things I noticed this, when I got this bike, there was no clutch. There was no fluid in here. So I put fluid in it, bled it, and uh, it's still a little mushy. So I might pull that clutch. I probably am gonna pull that clutch slave cylinder off and see if I can clean it, repair it, repair it, or replace it. If I can pop the piston out of that and clean that, it's probably gummed up as well too. It works good though, but uh, I can just feel it's just a little on the mushy side. And then the other thing is too, it's it runs beautiful smooth. I'm getting about, uh, well I just burned 9.5 liters of fuel and it went 160 kilometers, so 100 miles. So that's not bad, that's, where is that, 45 miles to a gallon, that's what these things are supposed to get. <clears throat> but it's just me, it just seems like a little on the rough side. It's, uh, I t to me it could be smoother. So I'm just putting on uh, my carb balancers on it. There's four, 
four of these little plugs you can pull off the intake manifold. Well, there's three plugs. And then there's one hose on the other one, this one here, which I can pull off. But <laughs> one of my gauges is fucked up here. This gauge here is kind of broken. It was like, these are such cheap. They're 70 bucks on, uh, uh, I think I bought that on eBay, but I think they're 70 bucks on e or on Amazon. I bought this like 10 years ago. And they're pretty cheap. They're pretty junk. So these three gauges work. And they're pretty accurate. So um, I'm not going to pull that cable off that one. I'm just going to run three hoses on uh, the two cylinders on this side and then the one back one. If they're all dead even, then I know that cylinder's dead even. I know it because you can't have three cylinders perfectly balanced and one out. So um, I'm just going to start it up like that. And uh, this is what I found. See here, it's pulling a lot less vacuum than these two. So just to be sure, I'm going to reverse these two two hoses. And if, it, if the symptoms change, then I know my carb is out of balance a little bit. You can dial this in a lot better than that. So I'm just going to reverse those hoses. Okay, I, I reversed these two hoses. So now if the problem changes to here, I know my carb is out of balance. Could be, you know, it could be a bad gauge. Like these gauges are junk and I haven't used them in years. Could be just this gauge. Even still, the carbs are a little bit out. That one's pulling seven and a half. That one's pulling about six. And uh, this, this is obviously not reading right because I switched it and the problem stayed here. can't trust these gauges. What I should do is just use one gauge and go across all four cylinders. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go with this one here. It's going to... Uh, yeah, so that six and a half. by this one. That's pulling a little more than six, six and a quarter. Okay, that's the front cylinder. Okay, I'm just going to use these two gauges here, and I'm going to do this bank here. There's my adjusting screw in there. So, this one's at six. Six and a quarter, around six, and this one's at about eight. And just to make sure these gauges weren't fucked up, I switched them around, and the exact same number of switched. So these these are balanced pretty good. So I'll try to dial these two in first. Get the screws out of it. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this. I need the stands here. One second here. The RPM should pick up if I get it right. 
That's at seven. That one's at seven. Check the other two on the other side. The RPMs have picked up, but I got this one at eight. This one's at eight. So now I'm going to put these two back on there. Hopefully they're on eight now. Okay, now this one's at six. Six and a half. So I've got these two at eight. There's only one adjusting screw here. The one carb is the set permanent one. You balance this one too. Now I've got to balance this carb to this bend. This carb, and then I balance the other carb to this one. That's it. Okay, I got these two balanced on this side. You do them first. And then you do this carb, the first carb, which I've got here now adjusted in, both pulling seven ish. Seven, a little under seven. I think it's kind of a little bit more That's over seven. Okay, the first carb up here, cylinder number one, I believe, is factory set. So you balance this carb to that one, because that's in the same bank. And we got those two balanced. Then you balance that one to this carb on this side. And then now that I've got these three in balance, I need to uh, balance this one to that one. Or this carb, this carb to that carb. See what happens. One little bit there. Not very much. Six e seven. Oh, about six and three quarters. These two are both about six and three quarters. So now I should be able to take this one and put it on either one of those two and it should be the same. So let's see. Oh, I'm right around seven or six and three quarters. That's these two and this one. That should do it. And level 800. about 72 degrees. Got my socks on with my sandals, only in Canada. I've been on a diet, so uh, just water. I can have some peanuts. 
I've lost 20 pounds, maybe 22. Um, main thing is just cutting out gluten, anything with wheat, wheat and sugar. I also cut out dairy products too, but I, I've been doing that for a few years. I still don't have this thing safety yet, but we've been, we went camping for a week up to uh, Kilbear, McGregor, Inverhuron, a couple different campgrounds. And uh, it's raining up today, Sunday. I think it's July, July 11th. Well, it would have been my mother's birthday. Um, so tomorrow, if it's, if it's nice out, I'll go get that safety. And uh, yeah, it's running really nice. Runs really good. Um, yeah, and, and I'm just kind of going over this video now. <laughs> I've been working on it off and on for a month. So I got the new, the new um, muffler tips on, but there's surface rust under the... Uh, uh the, the mufflers and i don't think i showed this in the video but uh there was a guy in windsor selling some new takeoffs um mufflers off an early 80s yamaha venture right here so i got two of these that are like spotless no rust on them at all he said they were on the bike for like two months there's one where did i put the other one they were both there. Oh, there's the other one right there. Yeah, they're in real nice shape. You can't beat that. So I'll be switching those over too, but maybe not right now. Um, I'm going to balance the Norton. I was thinking I was going to pull off that air breather and all that. It's a pain to take the air breather off, but it's got the uh, balancing pipe between the carbs. I can get my carb balances on it. I know I can adjust the idle. I'm pretty sure I can adjust the cables without taking the tank off because that tank's a pain to take off. It's like six bolts. So I'm going to have an upcoming video on balancing the carbs on that. That's really all that bike needs. And then the Yamaha Venture, or in the Yamaha Seika 900, XJ900, I'm just putting the exhaust pipes on this one. And I know when I, uh, I rebuilt these carbs, uh, they were out of balance and I, I balanced them as best I could with a, like a screwdriver in my eye, just looking at it to get them fairly close. But I'm gonna have to balance this one too. So I'll have another video on balancing carbs on these two bikes uh, right shortly here. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I have uh, I haven't ridden that bike in a while. So I've been riding this one, trying to get all the bugs worked out of it because I like to do a nice road trip on it. The thing just runs like a dream. You know, I, I can, this, on my Harley on that FLH, you know, it was just a stock FLH. And uh, in fifth, fourth gear, you can go 80 to 100 kilometers an hour. You know, your RPMs are getting up to pretty high. But really, you put it into fifth gear around uh, uh, 90K, you know, 80, 90, 100K. This bike in third gear, I can go 100K. <laughs> You know, you know, really it should be in fourth gear, and then fifth gear is like 120k and up. So it's uh, it's just way more power, smoother, quieter. It's just like riding a Cadillac. At least we're doing a trip on and cruising. You know, to be comfortable. You know, if I was younger, yeah, I can ride. Like you know, I rode my BSA when I was 20 or 19 or 20 years old up to Thunder Bay. You know, past Thunder Bay, 400 kilometers, so over 2,000 or over uh, yeah, over 2,000 kilometers. You know, on an old BSA in 1969, you know, I didn't, I didn't, didn't bother me at all being cramped up or anything. But now that I'm 61, I'm, uh, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm too beat up. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, I got, a, I got some videos coming up on this Norton. I had to take the head off again. Uh, you're going to see that in another video. The threads were stripped in here. I didn't notice it when I rebuilt the engine, put it together, went to put the spark plug in. There's no thread, so I just pulled that off. I haven't torqued it down yet anyways. And uh, But this cheap kit, I got the, uh, the tap in. It's no good, so I, I ordered a proper tap. Okay, that's it for this one. Uh, a couple more videos coming up soon.